Good afternoon. My name is James Truitt. My name is Ben Morris. You're watching The Crew at 5. Today we have a special report to help you learn about our cast and crew. Like many young adults, Zach Webster enjoys playing video games. But for Zach, this hobby can be more than just a pastime. What I'm going to show you is uh, uh, we customize our own paint schemes. My hobby is uh, I'm, I'm an online sim racer. I run race cars on computers. I watched uh, NASCAR with my dad for five years, you know, since I was young. And, you know, he's kind of fallen off on it, but I've, I've stayed interested and found this hobby a few years ago. NASCAR racing 2003 season. You know, obviously it's all virtual, so nobody's, you know, getting hurt or you're, you're not paying for damages or anything like that. But, you know, you're racing around you know, other people, you know, your car's not handling well, and then you're around 20 other people and their car's not handling well either. So it's uh, pretty challenging to be able to do that. Uh, simulator racing, you know, helps, me. I'm sure it helps me with like my, uh, you know, my reflexes, you know, hand-eye coordination and all, um, you know, my situational awareness, you know, knowing when something is maybe about to happen before it happens some drivers, professional drivers, that have made their way to where they are now through uh, sim racing. One of them's name is uh, William Byron. Uh, he started out in a uh, simulator called iRacing. He started in the truck series two years ago, and he is uh, this year driving in the Cup Series. So through that simulator, he's made it through all three series in, in three years. It still takes you know, you still got to start somewhere and all, and uh, me being as old as I am now, it would just be really, really difficult even through a simulator to uh, to make it to where they have. But would you get the opportunity to race? If I had the opportunity, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, that, I would definitely take that opportunity. And jump on it, right? Oh, yeah. So we have just seen how serious video game it can be for some. Zach makes me want to go find that game and play it. Mobile, Alabama is known for its fresh cuisine. Reporter Dylan Smith traveled around to different markets with a local butcher to learn how to pick the best meats. What's up, y'all? My name is Graham Perry. I'm a uh, chef extraordinaire and a former meat cutter. Not a butcher, a meat cutter, but I was a butcher in my past life. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about seafood, tell you a little bit about meat, tell you how to buy it, a little bit about that stuff, and uh, kind of describe you know, some of my cooking styles as well. good composure and stuff. You don't want like all this stuff peeling off and stuff. See all this? That's a bad onion right there. You want to find something all this protected. This one right here. It doesn't have that firm flesh like I want it. See all this? You don't even need to put that in a freaking vegetable bag, whatever those are called, because it's already protected. That's good stuff. Alright, what we're trying to do is we're part this bad boy out later. And this is, you know, we're gonna get a little bit more traditional today. We're not doing anything really exotic. We're trying to cut it up, country style it up, make it a little bit, of, you know, some Jamaican jerk, a little bit later, a little red stripe, you know, a little curry powder, just all the good stuff. It's a really good way to solve that large chicken breast problem, or better yet, go find a local farmer, or even better yet, go to the feed store and pick up some chickens and raise them and uh, butcher them. I, uh, you know, some animal activists out there may be against that. So if you are uh, against that, I recommend going vegan. Well, I think I just learned a lot of good ways how to pick out different meats. I never knew it could be this simple. We will be able to meet the butcher for this video right after this break. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. 
Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Which camera are we going and we're back here in the studio with the butcher we just saw a few minutes ago, Mr. Graham Perry. How you doing, Graham? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good, man. I have some really good stuff that I decided to jump into the studio with today, but Ooh. I'm going to kind of pull David Copperfield. I'm going to make it appear real quick. Oh. oh. Look at that. It's <laughs> good. Here? I know yeah. it's not any Baccarat dish or anything <laughs> fancy for today, but we have Watergate salad. It's actually one of my favorite. Water, yeah, it's pretty scandalous, yeah, I think, you know. You, you want to get a little whiff of that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absorb that here. Get, oh, oh, shoot. Whoa. Foodsafety.gov, man. Oh, good. Here, here, you know what we got, though? We have silverware. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, here, get some of that. Hey. So what is, what is all this? This is uh, marshmallows. Pistachio pudding, mm. walnuts, I'm a little bit, a little bit of Cool Whip. Yeah. Man, it's just a little bit of everything. And it's got crushed pineapples. It's kind of tropical, like I said, scandalous, and it's good. Man, didn't even get me a thing, but you know what? Here, salud. That way. Yeah, that. there we go. Mm. 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 Oh, Graham, this is really good, man. It's really good. So yeah. where does it get its name from, or is it just? I, I don't know. I think it must have came out when, I guess, the whole Watergate scandal. Maybe the next uh, salad's going to be Trump salad or something. Why Trump salad? <laughs> Scandals, man. <laughs> Scandals. <laughs> so about being a butcher, what's the hardest thing that you've ever had to cut? Like, is there any meat that's tougher to do than another? A pork crown roast. Really? Mm. And um, I wouldn't advise having one of those done they're not that good they don't taste that good they're very pretty on the table but i just stick with the watergate salad like i said it takes five minutes to make just leave the pork crown roast at the store grandma also tastes pecans in here too it's good man yes those right. are the <laughs> those are, are these like pecans that you like just naturally pick off the tree or no these are locally sourced oh okay. they're very good yes yes walmart <laughs> 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 That's where I go for my locally sourced items as well. Exactly. Walmart's got a big thing going on over where they locally source stuff. Hey, hey, get get in there. Get get in there. Yeah. That way. So with with your meat cutting efficiency, does your family like ever try to take advantage of that during the holidays and stuff? You know, call you up and ask you, hey, can you carve the turkey this year? Yeah. Yes, I, I do get abused a lot, and I really I prefer you know not to do that so if any, anyone calls me up you know I'm not available I'm sitting at home eating my Watergate salad so understandable but well thank you for being on here with us today yes here and like I said okay. dig in all right. all right we'll keep this with us yeah. <laughs> a recent study found that only 9% of people from the ages of 12 to 24 listen to the radio one student is trying to increase that number through his hobby my name is Ben Morris, and I am program director here at 97 on the Prowl. I just switched majors two falls ago from English to communications, and so in the spring I took a broadcast performance class, and the instructor, um, Heather Stanley, she is also the head over JAG Media, so she was recruiting more air talent for the Prowl and told us that we should all audition. And not everybody did, but I did. I got uh, lucky enough to be picked. Just wash your freaking hands. I love radio, you know, and I love the music and being kind of not really in control, but sort of the mediator for that, being able to bring it to people. It's just a really good feeling. There's a lot of competition, especially from WABD, I think it is now, because they're almost the same frequency as we are. So we really have to compete for people because they can just, you know, tune a half a notch to the left, here we are. One way we do that is looking at ratings, seeing what people like to do. And we've just got our first Nielsen ratings back in uh, October. So we can actually see the time of day most people are listening to, to us and um, 
way the clocks are set up, we can see what music's playing then, and just really hone in on what people want to do, want to want to hear. One way we try to stay on top of all this glorious trending mess is uh, through the clocks, and what those are is the schedule for each hour of the day. I would like to be in radio someday, possibly if that if that opens up. Uh, having a talk show would be cool. I love it. And uh, if, if not radio, definitely something close to it. So Ben, what is it about radio that you love the most? Uh, well, the big thing's not having to be on TV. Um, other than that, I, I just really enjoy the music part of it, you know. I grew up with my dad on the road a lot listening to radio. And I just found it's a really good way to connect with people because everybody's got barriers, whether yeah. they want to admit it or not, whether, you know, politics or religion or philosophy or something like that. But music just... That's it builds bridges between people. Shoes are one thing that college students love to buy, but this one student shows us his massive collection. He tells us how he buys them, then sells them for even higher. My name is Kenneth Stitt. Um, so my hobby is collecting and selling shoes. Um, I started selling shoes and collecting them probably around um, about 2014. Um, I sold a couple of pair, kept a couple of pair, you know, some I keep closer to my heart and then others, you know, some shoes, I have, a, I got a little more background with them, so I probably clean my shoes, well, I pretty much clean them, if I wear them and I go out and they get dirty, I'm going to clean them then, but I probably clean them every other day, once a week, you know, depending on which shoes they are, you know, once you get a new pair of shoes, you pretty much wear them the most, so. I probably clean them more than anything once I get a new pair of shoes. But, oh, uh, yeah, I probably clean them at least once a week. Not every shoe, but almost every shoe. I started selling shoes. Well, I, I first started buying my own shoes on my own at, right at the basic training. Well, I was technically still in basic training. Had got a 12 day pass, and I had bought me some uh, some retro joints, uh, the 11s, the snake skins. And, at the basic, I bought my uh, first pair of threes that I had. That, they're joints, they are reflectors. They pretty much, they was like $300. And right now, they actually go for probably almost $1,000. One summer, I know I had to pay my car note, so I sold probably two, three pairs of shoes, $300 a piece, to one of my friends. And since it was my friend, I kind of dropped the price a bit. It's about, they could have went probably 400 so one pack of one probably five hundred bit. I sold them all three on three hundred dollars, made nine hundred dollars off of them. Uh, to this day, I still collect and buy shoes. I actually got some on the way now. I keep collecting shoes, and one day I'm gonna eventually stop selling them and just pretty much keeping the shoes and storing my own collection of shoes and get joints from all the way back when they first started. I'm probably the best ones to have. So that's my hobby. So we've just seen how shoes are not just something we wear, but we can also collect and even make a profit of them. One man is taking his passion for weather and turning it into a career. Reporter Graham Perry has more on that story. My name is Dylan Smith. I'm a meteorology student at the University of South Alabama. I've been working for Chile for about six years now. Uh, Chile stands for the Center for Hurricane Intensity and Landfall Investigation. Now we're going out to Campus West at the University of South Alabama. This is where our measurement station is on campus. Uh, so I can show y'all um, what, what exactly I do. I've wanted to be a meteorologist since, probably since I was about uh, in 11th grade. Um, we had uh, a huge tornado out in my hometown. And um, between two lightning strikes that night, I actually was able to see an actual tornado. And ever since that, I, was just, and I saw all the damages that happened to like people I knew and whatnot. And ever since that, I just I wanted to stop that from happening to people, or at least be able to prepare. These stations, you have to always keep this thing, this box open, so that when people look at the data, they know that there's maintenance going on. Whenever uh, at this time slot, whenever the data was recorded, and that's done by this little sensor right here. So this has always got to be open. I enjoy this job because I am a meteorology uh, major, and I like seeing the. Uh, actual mechanics behind where we get our data from and how it's portrayed and how it's taken. I'm 55 in Hattiesburg, 61 in uh, Biloxi and Pasigula, 57 in Mobile. It, I, I like taking something extremely complicated and making it simple for other people to understand. And I like helping people in this way too. So I think people should care about the weather because you want to be prepared for every day, don't you? 
our meteorologists are extremely important to us on the Gulf Coast. It is amazing how one person can turn something they love into a career. Up next, after this break, we will have a special on barbecue. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Barbecue is a big part of tradition in the South. Here in Mobile, we have a student who tells us how grilling is a big part of his life. My name is James Truitt. My favorite hobby is actually grilling. Um, I've been grilling since I was about 13 years old. I kind of got it from my father watching him grill all the time and it just made me want to grill and I feel like it was something that was kind of like made me feel like a man. The thing about grilling I dislike is the fact that it's like you know when you grilling of course it's like a lot of smoke is circulating up in the air so I I, I can't stand when the smoke starts to get in my eye it's like it's, it's a burning feeling but but grilling when you're grilling with me grilling so long that's like at this point now I'm used to it so the seasoning, I can't really tell, you know, it's kind of like my secret. Career. I don't want to really put that out like that. But I mean, you know, of course, I, on the season, I give y'all, I use the seasoned salt, seasonal salt. But uh, the other season, I can't really put that out like that. It's my secret. So. My favorite thing in the grill is, of course, the main thing, chicken. You know, chicken is like the number one thing. I'll, I'll throw some, some, some ribs on there at some time. Jamaica sausage, Italian sausage, uh, corn on the cob, you know, put some butter on it, wrap it up in the aluminum foil. Um, it's my secret, though. Man, this got me hungry, dude. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you could do all that, man. Man, I love it, man. Grilling is something that I've been doing since I was 13, and I just can't stop. <laughs> I just can't stop, man. So, so what is your secret recipe? Just between you and me, what is it? I can't tell you. I Aww. can't tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> well, I mean, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. But what's what's the hardest thing you've ever had to cook, just out of curiosity? Mmm, ribs. Really? Just because it's that you gotta really let that cook. I mean, you can't just put ribs on the cheek on the grill, and yeah, it just, takes a while. It takes a while. Ribs takes a while. So, yeah. and you gotta season it just right. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. We want to thank you all for tuning into this newscast. Have a great afternoon and hope to see you next time. See you guys.